Irony is the hard crust on the bread of adversity. Christ, long, long ago, as creator, provided habitable conditions for us on this earth, generously providing all the essential atmospheric conditions for life, including vital water. Yet on the cross, when he was aflame with thirst, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. Nevertheless, the Lord seeth fit to chasten his people. Yea, he trieth their patience and their faith. Life's comparatively few ironies are much more than offset by heaven's many mercies. We all know what it's like not to be listened to, but how about disdain or even contempt? Furthermore, there is a difference between noticing rejection, as Jesus did, and railing against rejection as he did not. And then there was the soulful lament, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. As the Creator, Christ fashioned worlds without number, yet with his fingers he fashioned a little clay from spittle, restoring the sight to one blind man. Jesus' marvelous meekness prevented any root of bitterness from springing up in him. Do you and I understand that the significance of our service does not depend upon its scale? Within hours, Christ would rescue all mankind. Yet he heard the manipulated crowd cry, Barabbas, thereby rescuing a life-taking murderer instead of life-giving Jesus. Even after treading the wine press alone, which ended in his stunning personal triumph and in the greatest victory ever, majestic Jesus meekly declared, glory be to the Father. Can we remain true amid false justice? Will we do our duty against the roar of the crowd? As the master teacher, Christ tailored his tutoring depending upon the spiritual readiness of his pupils. A painful crisis may actually be the means of stripping corrosive pride off of that virtue. He himself noted that precisely because he was lifted upon the cross, he was able to draw all men unto him. And being lifted up by men, thereby even so should men be lifted up by the Father. Glory be to the Father, first for rearing such an incomparable Son. Second, glory be to the Father for allowing his special Son to suffer and to be sacrificed for all of us.